Good morning everybody. Today we are going to talk about bone. The learning objectives for my today's lecture are bone as connective tissue, functions of bones, classification of bones, structure, vasculature and development of bone. Bone is a dense connective tissue. It performs many functions. There are multiple ways to classify the bones. The basic structural unit of bone is called osteon. Bone is a highly vascular and richly innervated structure. It ossifies either in cartilage or in membrane or in both. Now what is a tissue? A tissue is defined as group of cells with a common form that is structure and function. There are four basic tissues of our body, epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscular tissue and nervous tissue. To understand the structure of our body, let us go to this section in which you will find the surface of our body is covered by skin which is lined by stratified squamous epithelium. After reflecting the skin, we come across subcutaneous tissue which is basically loose areolar tissue. Deeper to that lies dense connective tissue which is in the form of various fascia in case of upper limb, it is either in the form of brachial or antibrachial fascia. Brachial fascia is deep fascia of arm and antibrachial fascia is deep fascia of forearm. After dissecting it out, we come across muscular tissue. In case of limb, they are skeletal muscles attached to the bones. The bone is a dense connective tissue. Now these bones, these bones join with each other to form a joint. Muscles are attached to the bones. They are innervated by the nerves which make them to contract. Thus, in total, there are four basic tissues of our body. There are epithelium tissue which covers the surface, connective tissue which connects different tissues of the body with each other, muscular tissue which contracts and is under the influence of nervous tissue which makes muscular tissue to contract. All these tissues act together to perform a particular function. For example, if we talk about elbow joint, it is formed between lower end of the humerus and upper end of radius and ulna. Muscles are attached to the bones. These muscles are innervated by nerves. Contraction of the muscles is made by stimulations that come from the central nervous system to these muscles and muscles act on the bones to perform a particular function which may be flexion or extension at the elbow joint and protection to all these structures is done by skin which is lined by stratified squamous epithelium. What are various functions of the bones? Let us divide the functions of the bones into mechanical functions. Bones protect a viscera. For example, brain is protected by the skull and heart is protected by the rib cage. They give shape to our body. Shape of a particular part of the body depends on the shape of the underlying structures. Bones being rigid in nature, they provide a framework around which body is built. So bones are responsible for the shape and form of our body. Bones act as livers which make use of the force generated by skeletal muscles in a beneficial way. As already said, bones act as livers which make use of forces generated by skeletal muscles in a beneficial way. What are the synthetic functions of the bones? Synthesis of blood cells. The major synthetic role of the bones is to produce blood cells. Metabolic functions of the bones. Mineral storage. Bones serve as an important storehouse of the minerals such as calcium and phosphorus. The yellow bone marrow of long bones acts as a storage of fats. Bones also play an important role in, in maintaining acid-based wellness of the body. Bone buffers blood against excessive pH changes by absorbing or releasing alkaline salts. How bones are classified? If we go to this slide of skeleton, you'll find there are different types of the bones, modified long bones. If we go to this peak of the skeleton, we'll find there are different types of the bones. Bone humerus, which is a bone of upper limb, it is a long bone. Scapula is a flat 
irregular bone sternum again a flat bone and clavicle again a long bone then vertebra which is an irregular bone so bones are classified based on their morphology that is shape long bones such as femur humerus and radius short bones such as corporal bones miniature long bones metacarpals and metatarsals irregular bones such as hip bone and vertebrae flat bones parietal bone of skull pneumatic bones such as maxilla thymoid syphenoid and frontal bone so bones are classified depending upon their shape such as long bone short bones flat bones and irregular bones second classification of bones is based on their development where from they originate endochondrial ossification so endochondrial bones are those bones which develop from a cartilaginous model intramembranous bones are those bones which develop from a membrane some bones of our body develop both from membrane and cartilage to make this simple let us go to this slide endochondrial ossification here the embryonic mesenchyme first changes into a cartilaginous model and this cartilaginous model is later on converted into a bone this type of ossification is called endochondral ossification in intramembranous ossification the embryonic mesenchyme is directly converted into bone so bone develops directly from membrane this is true for the bones of the cranial wall this helps in the development of the brain and so cartilaginous bones develop from a cartilaginous model as shown in this figure this is true for long bones where a cartilaginous model is replaced by bony model do not confuse it that cartilage is converted into bone this is true for long bones for example bo long bones of upper limbs such as radius ulna and humerus the steps involved in this type of ossification as already discussed in the previous slide first of all there is mesenchymal condensation some of the mesenchymal cells differentiate into chondroblasts then there is formation of the perichondrial membrane with osteogenic potential perichondrium has two layers outer fibrous layer and inner osteogenic layer from which osteogenic blood arises then there is enlargement of cartilaginous cells in some areas of this membrane this is followed by deposition of calcium salts in the intercellular spaces around the cartilage under the influence of alkaline phosphatase secreted by cartilage cells so deposition of calcium within this cartilaginous model makes permeability of nutrients from perichondrium to the cartilage impossible it is just like the cordon around an area where we cut off water supply power supply and other routes so as to stop the nutrition to that particular area as a consequence these chondrocytes die due to lack of nutrition then there is invasion of periosteal bud which develops from osteogenic layer of perichondrium this bud contains blood vessels osteogenic cells the periosteal bud invades in this area and their proliferation starts leading to the formation of osteoid osteoid is uncalcified bone so cartilage cells are now replaced by the bone cells they are not converted into the bone cells as already said leading to the formation of uncalcified bone consisting of osteoblasts and collagen fibers as shown in this diagram this is true in case of the long bones where a center of ossification appears in the diaphysis of long bone the center of ossification which appears first is called the primary center of ossification it usually appears in the diaphysis this is followed by death of the chondrocytes and invasion of osteogenic bud into this area leading to the formation of osteoid which is uncalcified bone then secondary centers of ossification appear these secondary centers of ossification usually appear after the primary centers of ossification they appear for the end of long bones the rest of the process is same leading to the formation of end of long bones from secondary centers of ossification as is true for 
the shaft of long bones. Thus, this initial cartilaginous model is replaced by a bony model. This type of ossification is called endochondral ossification. The second type of ossification is intramembranous ossification, where bone develops directly from a membrane. This is true for the bones of cranial vault. The reason being, these membranes facilitate the development of growing brain up to two years of age. In the cranial vault, there are anterior fontanella, posterior fontanella, and two lateral fontanella. So total, there are six fontanella. These fontanella are basically the membranes which permit the growth of the developing brain up to two years of age. So anterior fontanella is diamond shaped. It closes by two years of age. Do not confuse. There is clinical closure of anterior fontanella and anatomical closure. Clinical closure may occur by 18 months of age, but the anatomical closure of the anterior fontanella occurs by two years of. What are the various functions of anterior fontanella? This fontanella is very important. Before birth, it allows brain growth. What is supporting a sign? Supporting sign is overriding of cranial skull bones in case of fetal death. This is figured out by an X-ray. During birth, these bones override each other to facilitate parturition. After birth, anterior fontanella helps in the development of the brain up to the age of 24 months. It is also used for checking dehydration and intracranial tension. In case of dehydration, anterior fontanella is depressed, whereas in case of raised intracranial tension, as occurs in meningitis, anterior fontanella is bulged out. Intrathecal administration of such drugs is done via anterior fontanella. If we insert a needle through anterior fontanella, it can take a sample of blood from superior sagittal sinus. Since sonographic waves can pass through this anterior fontanella, we can do an ultrasound of brain in case of neonates to diagnose intracranial hemorrhage. To diagnose intracranial hemorrhage, we need CT scan of the brain. So developmentally, bones are divided into cartilaginous bones and membranous bones. Cartilaginous bones develop from cartilaginous model, whereas membranous bones develop from membranous model. Another classification of the bonus is based upon the region to which they belong. It is divided into axial and appendicular skeleton. An axial skeleton includes bones of the skull, vertebral column, rib cage, and sacrum, whereas appendicular skeleton includes bones of appendages, that is limbus. We can also classify bones depending upon the region of the body to which they belong. So in total, there are 206 bones in our body. Out of them, 80 are from axial skeleton, 8 bones belong to the skull, there are 14 bones in the face, and then there is hyoid, there are 6 auditory ossicles, malleus, encus, and staphys on either side, and 26 bones of the vertebral column, ribus account for 24 bones, and 1 sternum. Now what is skull? Skull is basically the skeleton of head. If we remove mandible from the skull, it becomes cranium, and if we remove Skull cap or calvaria, it becomes base of skull. Skull consists of 22 bones. There are 8 sutured bones in the skull, 13 facial bones, 1 mandible. The functions of cranium is it encloses brain, gives attachment to the muscles, and also contains paranasal sinuses. Paranasal sinuses lighten the bone. They give anteriorly unpaired parietal bone. Posteriorly, there is occipital bone. Then there are paired bones, parietal bones, temporal bone, and saphenoid. So total eight, in addition to the facial skeleton. Then appendicular skeleton, total there are 126 bones. Upper, in upper limb, there are 64 bones, and in the lower limb, there are 62 bones. Now what is a long bone? In a typical long bone, length is more than width. They have a shaft with heads at both ends. Examples are humerus and femur. So both these bones consist of upper end and lower end and shaft and contain a medullary cavity. Short bones are short in posture and can be of any shape. Bones of the wrist 
which are also called corporal bones or examples of short bones. They are arranged in two rows. The proximal row consists of cicified lunate tricuter pisiform. The distal row consists of trapezium, trapezoid, cavitate and hamate. They mostly contain spongy bone. Then irregular bones. We don't have any definite shape. We call them as irregular bones. Example of irregular bones is hip bone, which consists of pubicillium and ischium and a vertebra. Vertebrae are also irregular bones. They consist of a body and neural arch. Pneumatic bones. Pneumatic bones contain air. Examples are maxilla, siphonite, ethmoid, frontal bones. The function of these pneumatic bones is they, they make a bone lighter. They add resonance to the sound. They also help in air conditioning. Pneumatic bones are found in paranasal air sinuses. They are modified long bones. I, Either their ends or shafts are modified. They don't contain a medullary cavity. Example is clavicle. What are miniature long bones? These bones have a miniature appearance, usually have only one epiphysis. In examples are metacorpulus and metatorsalus and flat bones. They are thin and flattened. Examples are scapula and ribs usually curved. In case of flat bones, there are two palettes of compact bone which are separated by intervening spongy bone. This intervening spongy bone is known as diploi. They contain numerous veins. Examples of bones with diploi are parietal, frontal, rib sternum and scapula. If you take the section of the parietal bone, you'll find there are two tables, inner and outer table of compact bone separated by spongy bone called diploi. The veins present in the diploi are called diploic veins. Let us take an x-ray of the skull and see what are these diploic veins. Let us take an x-ray of the skull to see how these diploi look. In this x-ray you will find that there is an outer table and inner table of the bone. The two tables are separated by radiolucent area which represents the diploi. The veins present in the diploi are called the diploi veins. Miscellaneous classification of the bones. There are some bones which are called the accessory bones. These are small pieces of the bones which develop from a separate center of ossification. They are divided into accessory bones. For example, in case of skull, there are small pieces of bone which develop from a separate center of ossification but fail to unite with main mass of bone. For example, sutural or vormian bones and interparietal bones. In case of the skull, we call them as vormian bones. These bones are usually present in the interparietal suture. They develop from a separate center of ossification and do not fuse with the main mass of bone and are called vormian bones. Sesamide bones. These bones are usually found in the tendon of a muscle or a ligament of a muscle. For example, in case of ligamentum patelli, this bone is called one, for example, one present in the ligamentum patelli is called kneecap, which is a sesamide bone, kneecap or patella. Favilla is another sesamoid bone embedded in the lateral head of the gastrocnomious muscle. It is present in 10 to 30 percent of general population with a higher incidence in Asian population. We can pick up this bone by using an x-ray. This is the lat lateral and medial head of the gastrocnemius. Fabula is present in the lateral head of gastrocnemius. Pisiform bone. Again an example of sesamoid bone. These sesamoid bones differ from long bones of the body. They develop in tendon, ligaments or capsule of a joint. They ossify after birth. They lack periosteum, medullary cavity and haversian system. Their function is that they resist pressure, alter direction of the pull of muscle and minimize friction. Some examples of sesamoid bone and their location. Patella is found in the tendon of quadriceps femoris. Pisiparum is found in the flexor corpi ulnaris. Pabula is found in the lateral head of gastrocnemius. Rider's bone is found in the adductor longus. Let us go to the gross anatomy of long bone. A developed long bone consists of a shaft, upper end and lower end. Diaphysis is the shaft of a developing long bone. It is present in the middle and is composed of compact bone. The ends of the developing bone are called epiphysis. They are composed mostly of spongy 
bone. If we take a transverse section of a long bone, it is surrounded by periosteum, that is the outside covering of the diaphysis. Then it is connected with the bone by fibrous connective tissue membrane. Sharpies fibers secure periosteum to the underlying bone. As already said, bone is highly vascular. It is supplied by arteries. In case of developing bone, in addition to neutral arteries, we have epiphyseal arteries, metaphyseal arteries, and diaphyseal artery, which is represented by the nutrient artery. The ends of the long bone are covered by articular cartilage. It covers the external surface of epiphysis. It is made of high line cartilage. It decreases friction at joint surface. Within the shaft of long bone is a cavity called medullary cavity. It contains yellow marrow, mostly fat in adults, but contains red marrow in young individuals and infants. This marrow helps in the formation of red blood cells or it helps in hematopoiesis. Bone markings. Surface features of the bones. They represent the situs of attachment of muscles, tendons and ligaments. There are passages for nerves and vessels. Categories of the bone marking. Projections and processes grow out from the bone surface. Depressions or cavities. They are indentations on the surface of the bone. Changes in the human skeleton. In embryos, the skeleton is primarily hyaline cartilage. During development, much of the cartilage is replaced by bone. Cartilage remains in isolated areas, bridge of the nose, parts of the ribs and joints. There are three types of bone cells, osteocytes or mature bone cells, osteoblasts, these are bone forming cells, osteoclasts, these are bone destroying cells. They break down bone matrix for remodeling and release of calcium. Bone remodeling is a process by both osteoblasts and osteoclasts. So the three types of bone cells are osteoblasts, lay down bone, osteocytes are mature bone cells and osteoclasts cause resorption of bone. Now what is haversion system? Haversion is present in compact bone. It is not present in supangy bone and sesamoid bones. Osteon is the basic structural unit of compact bone. It consists of a central canal which contains neurovascular bundle that is nerves, vessels and lymphaticus of the bone. It is surrounded by concentric lamellae. Between the lamellae there are all spaces called the lacunae. Osteocytes are present in the lacunae. As shown in this animation, these are concentric lamellae of bone. In other words, we call them as palates of the bone. They are separated by spaces called the lacunae. The neurovascular bundle of the bone lies in the central canal. Osteocytes are present in the lamellae of the bone. They are separated from each other by lacunae. So the spaces between the lamellae are called the lacunae as shown by these white dotted lines. So parts of mature long bone are and that is upper, lower end and shaft. It contains a medullary cavity which contains bone marrow. Ossification of the long bones. The parts of a developing long bone are epiphysis, the endis and the tips of the long bone that ossify from secondary centers of ossification are called epiphysis. Metaphysis, the endis of diaphysis near the epiphysis are known as metaphysis. Long bone has two metaphysis. Metaphysis is the zone of active growth of a bone. Before the fusion of diaphysis and epiphysis, metaphysis are richly supplied with blood vessels through end arteries forming hairpin bands. Commonest site of osteomyelitis in children. So what is epiphysis and metaphysis? Epiphysis of the bone are lined by epiphyseal palate of cartilage separating epiphysis from metaphysis. The cells of this cartilaginous palate proliferate and or responsible for the lengthwise growth of a long bone. When the age of maturity arrives, this cartilage, this cartilage palate ossifies and then the bone can no longer grow in length. This palate of cartilage is nourished by both epiphyseal and metaphyseal arteries. Diaphysis is the term used for elongated shaft of long bone. It ossifies from primary center of ossification. Remember epiphysis. Epiphysis are 
parts of the developing bone which develop from secondary centers of ossification. In contrast, diaphyses are parts of the bone that develop from primary center of ossification. The endes of bone ossify from secondary centers of ossification. The shaft ossifies from primary center of ossification. And it is here that ossification begins. Primary center of ossification is the center where the process of ossification starts first of all. Secondary center of ossification is defined as the center process of ossification starts after the primary center of ossification. Now what is blood supply of the bone? Bone is richly vascular. It is supplied by epiphyseal artery, metaphyseal artery and diaphyseal artery. In addition, there is periosteal artery. Diaphyseal artery enters and is through the neutron foramen. What is the course of Newton artery? The Newton artery enters the long bone and divides into ascending and descending arteries. Capillary arcades are formed in marrow spaces between trabecularly. When growth is complete, the growth palate disappears and the trabecular bone circulation of the epiphysis and the metaphysis join together. What is innervation of the bone? The nerve supply for the bone is largely unknown. Aversion canals, periosteum and medullary vessels are innervated. Recent electron microscopy studies showed that bone is rich in nerve fiber processes running along the vessels adjacent to the trabeculae. Now what is the osteon? The basic structural unit of the bone is called osteon. It consists of a central canal, contains neurovascular bundle of the bone. It is surrounded by lamellae of the bone. Lacunae are present between the lamellae. Osteocytes are present in the lacunae. I want to summarize this lecture on bone as bone is a dense connective tissue. It performs multiple functions. Growing bone consists of epiphysis, metaphysis, and diaphysis. It ossifies either in cartilage or membrane. Basic structural unit of the bone is called osteon. Long bone receives blood supply through periosteal, epiphysial, diaphysial, and metaphysial arteries. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to like, subscribe and share my channel.